art. Exquisite art. Oh, yes. So abstract, delectable art. Thank you. Come again. Oh, look at this non fungible art I found. Oh. Oh. What, uh, what's. Whoa. Whoa. Putting a value, a price tag on art seems kind of easy. You see it everywhere. A painting has a price tag on it. But it's also kind of impossible to do. Here's some painting on uh, two sides and uh, one is painted by some random internet stranger and the other one is painted by a well-known renowned artist, okay? Let's see how many you can get it right. I'll give you about uh, three to five seconds for each painting and okay, let's go. One, two, three, go! If you guessed them all correctly, congratulations! You are the chosen one, the art connoisseur, the knower of all fine art knowledge. Congratulations. Now, uh, there's no point for you watching this video now. But if you don't, then you'd be normal. Art is subjective. And I don't think anyone's gonna argue with that. But in this day and age where things are defined by how much it costs, can the cost really determine the actual value of the art? But art comes in many different forms, so let's take a look at a specific one. One you probably know about. It's not some random bad art, it's uh, it's, it's fine, yeah. You know, fine art. How much does fine art cost? Too much, way too much. Okay, if I can't afford it, it means it's too much. But before jumping into it, I want to clarify a few things. Fine art is art that only exists for aesthetic expression and stuff. You can't really do anything with it but stare and gawk at its magnificence and beauty and bullshit. On the contrary, there's low art, also known as applied art. It's art that are functional like pottery or carpentry. And it ain't aesthetic, it ain't fine enough, so it's low art, okay? It's lowly, it's not pretty, ew. Yeah. But if you decorate it with intricate paintings and gold leaves, engraving, debossing, or whatever, and not let anyone touch it, then it might become fine art. I made that part up, you can probably touch it, but uh, you, you get the point. If the skill and the effort are the main consideration for the value of art, wouldn't it be easy to determine its worth? You just plug in some number into a uh, art formula, price tag formula, and then you get a number, wha ba bam done, uh, you sell it, easy. Well, oh, it ain't that simple, because not every fine art are equally fine. Just as a case study, let's take a look at Salvador Mundi, one of the only surviving Da Vinci's painting. But for a long time, it was considered lost. Many copies of the painting were made, and that creates a lot of confusion within the art world. It was thought that the original painting was lost in a fire, and so nobody really cared to look for the Salvador Mundi. In 1958, it was sold for measly 45 bucks. Oh. But with the help of modern technology and all the scanny scan things, they can authenticate and even confirm that the painting is painted by Da Vinci. And after that, the painting was auctioned for over 450 million dollar reduce. That's not cheap, that's seven zeros behind it. In fact, it's one of the most expensive painting ever sold. And for the price of Salvador Mundi, you can buy 14 full-size genuine T-Rex fossil for 32 million each. Mm. Or you could buy 500 decked out Rolls Royce with all the umbrellas and starry roof and wine cooler and a personal driver and a fucking therapy dog. Or you could eat 8.2 metric tons of banana every day for a hundred years. But look at this ski painting I found online for about 100 bucks. It's also fine art by the way, so you know, it's pretty good. And don't tell me it looks bad because I would pick this over Da Vinci's any day. Any day at all. Maybe it's actually Da Vinci himself that painted it, okay? Uh, who knows? Okay, I get it. It's not really a fair comparison to make because anyone knows who Da Vinci is. 
and he is oops dead and no more painting from him and he happened to be in some movies and a sidekick of an assassin or something and he invented helicopters and planes and lift and tanks and fucking uh, 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 he's a smart guy, did a bunch of stuff. Uh, anyways, even with the scarcity and the mastery and popularity of the painting, surely it can't be that different. It's inconceivable, it's unheard of, it's uh, preposterous, no, I, I, it doesn't make any sense. Or does it? This sounds pretentious and it's also a bit of a tangent, but art is a reflection of society. When painters paint, the image that's put on the canvas carries their emotions and opinion and their experience in life. And that's why some paintings are even considered significant to understanding human history. But of course, not every artist can achieve the same degree of expression. And that separates the good from the great. What I'm trying to say is artists or the art itself feed off of society and vice versa. And that relationship in turn builds value within art. But then again, it's not the average art enjoyer that gets to determine how art should be viewed or valued. It's the one on the tippy top on the cloud somewhere. I don't know. I don't know where they live. Well, it's a known fact that fine art tends to be gatekept by the elites. You know, rich people with art knowledge and expensive taste. Historically, they're the one who got the jargons and words to describe paintings and its weird quirks and stuff. And also, more importantly, the money to commission art. I mean, a lot of art wouldn't exist today without them. And subsequently, even until now, the ability to judge and determine art value is, uh, you could say, almost exclusive to the bougies. And that's what artists like Banksy try to shine a light on. This dude hates high art society so much, he straight up uh, half shredded his own art in the middle of the auction. A 1.4 million stencil art, by the way. But instead of decreasing in value, the price shot up for over 18 times. The big art always wins in the end of the day. Remember the banana duct taped to the wall? It was sold for $120,000. And what did they buy exactly? Uh, surely not the banana and the fucking duct tape. What they purchased is a certificate to replicate the banana and also to display it with the artist's name at the side. So more people could pay more to see more banana. A uh, fucking banana. Statistically, if you want to make it to the top of the art world, you gotta be super talented. And you gotta have connections with the right people. But if you do achieve two of those things, you can experiment with any type of art that you want. Really, the freedom will be granted to you. Kind of like the banana guy, actually. And so that's why most artists bust their ass painting for commissions and honing their craft to absolute mastery. But they never really make it big because of the lack of exposure. Speaking of which, let's talk about Jackson Pollock. You probably seen one of his work in like the, the action painting, you know? Though on the surface, it looks kind of meaningless and pointless, right? There's actually a point to the painting. Each and every line and blob and strokes and every accident that happened to be on there represent the artist's action itself. But knowing that his painting is sold for $200 million, it's not so pointless now, is it? However, without Clement Greenberg, you know, the guy who pushed Bollock into artistic stardom, he might have turned out to be just another random, weird, modernist painter in the 1900s. And there's hundreds of them. And instead of selling his painting for $200 million, he might only sell it for 20000 I don't know, I'm making this shit up. Art can cost a, an absurd amount to say the least for a seemingly random reason. It's not a matter of how much it should cost anymore, it's how much I can price it and a billionaire will still pay for it. And instead of subjective or personal value, monetary value became the main consideration when buying art. Especially the expensive paintings and sculptures and fine art. And that's why not all fine art is equally fine because it was rigged from the start. At this point, it might just sound like, okay, rich people bad, rich people own art, rich people decide art. Uh, please, I have another point I'm trying to make. Uh, it's, uh, it's free art, by the way. Another world of art that I didn't even talk about. Uh,
well. Expensive art isn't what art is all about. Lots of artists want their art shared with the world, even for free sometimes. And nowadays, we even have things like music and movie and video streaming where anyone could access any content anywhere. But it's not exactly free, it's more like uh, really cheap. Like going to a movie wouldn't be expensive if movie theaters are common around your part. I hope it is. But if not, there's always Netflix. Music can be enjoyed on your phone for free with ads. My Spotify premium, you cheap! Or you could go on a street somewhere, or in a bar, in a club, in a mall, in a hospital. Or you could pay a few bucks a month for a subscription to access every song on earth. But these arts, entertainment art, they're often taken for granted. We even have words like elevator music to describe music that plays in the background in the, in the, the elevator. Even queen, you know, the queen, not the dead queen, the, I, the uh, uh, fuck. Queen, yeah, that queen. Uh, they wrote a song about this, did you know? I bet sometimes you don't even notice the music in the elevator until you're standing with your psycho ex or something. And for the same logic, the street feels a little more alive with live music. And your room feels a little less lonely with a movie running on your TV. Full room. Full room. Come in. Yo. Entertainment art can establish atmosphere in the setting, just like a painting would. And that's what I call uh, aesthetic value. Entertainment art doesn't only provide monetary value or aesthetic value for that matter. It plants a seed of idea within you. And the fact that the population enjoys a specific genre of movie doesn't mean it's better than other genre. That's the matter of personal taste and cultural value. I used to go see the latest Marvel movies before I get spoiled. In hindsight, it feels like a lot of wasted time and energy, but hey, uh, the hype was fun, I guess. And I bet it spawns even more hardcore fan than it has even before. For someone who's really into MCU, they might have their whole room filled with Marvel shit. They probably wrap their car in Iron Man skin and tattoo Black Widow on their inner thighs and shit. Oh. No. And the same goes for the music industry. Imagine you're an up and coming artist and one of your songs happened to pop off on TikTok. You gain a vast amount of exposure within days and your name will spread around and everyone will play your song in supermarket, convenience stores, gas station, hospital, your funeral, and then you sell shirts, hoodies, mugs, fucking bath water, jarred fart, whatever. So cultural value is more profitable than anything else in the world because it scales infinitely? Uh, okay, I'm, I swear I'm getting dumber every day. Just because you can put your name on the top chart doesn't mean it's gonna stay there forever. I mean, no shit. But there's no denying that the corporate, the PR team, your manager will try their best to milk the shit out of that cash cow called cultural phenomenon. Jaws, thousands of rip-off films and Funko Pop. Game of Thrones, they got whiskeys and Funko Pop. Matrix, they made a game and also a sequel and a, 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 a spin-off. And Funko Pop, Star Wars. Do I really need to say anything here? Uh, Funko Pop? Why is everything like Funko Pop? Out of the top 100 highest grossing film of all time, 18 are original movies. The rest are either sequel, superhero, or Disney live action remake. Video game industry suffered the same problem. If you're a gamer, you know what I mean. Uh, you know, time for an innovative Battle Royale Call of Duty and fucking brand new FIFA game. Wow, with the new face scanning mechanic and you can make your own character so accurate. Wow and it's time to release another Skyrim, a remastered mastered version deluxe game of the year award edition. Just what I need. Is it even good for art? I mean, it depends on who you ask really. I would say it's normal because I tend to gravitate towards a similar content, especially when I'm already immersed in the world, the character, the story, or the setting. I'm not gonna claim that everybody has this mentality, but I'm willing to bet that a lot of people, I'm talking majority of the people that consume entertainment, tend to do those type of things. The corporates and studio can see how deep people invest themselves into a culture, a niche, a trend. and so. 
why try new things when it already works out, you know? It's not often that they struck gold like that. And culture itself is one of the most exploitable thing that entertainment can create. Assuming they know how to milk them. Of course, there is more to entertainment art than movies and music and video games. There's such things like, like performance art, like theaters and musical and ballet or whatever kind of dance your culture has. Even videos can be considered art. Is, is this art? And though it seems like they're incomparable to each other in any practical sense, but they do share one thing, which is the ability to create culture within their own audience. Fine art caters to high society because they can afford the art and they live close to it. And to me, that's what sets entertainment art apart from other type of art. It's how accessible it is. When anyone at all can participate in a culture, even the most littlest form of participation, it feeds into a machine called cultural phenomenon. But in the end, you pay as much as you are invested in the culture, the idea, the trends. So entertainment art isn't the predatory thing that I made it out to be. Sure, it's possible to be swept into a fandom if your friends are all into one thing, but ultimately the choice is yours to make whether or not you're gonna put money into those trendy facts. Ideas will always persevere as long as there's a fan, a follower, or a believer. But one thing is sure, entertainment needs an audience to survive. And when enough people decide that it's not worth their time and money anymore, that's when a trend will slowly die. And there's already a new thing. My boomer brain is too slow. This whole time I've been talking about art in a, an average everyday consumer point of view. I even neglected how much time and effort and money it takes to produce art like movies. But I have a reason for that because that's not what we, the normal people, the consumers see when it comes to price tag. And to me, the cost of production is more about the investment than the actual value of the art itself. And that's why I yap on so much about value. It's because when it comes to art, the only factor that have effect on the consumer is the perceived value. And that entails cultural value, aesthetic value, personal liking, sentimental value, and all those things. Let's picture a billionaire trying to make a movie and he spends uh, 3 billion making a movie and fucking 5 decade finishing it. But if the movie doesn't have anything to appreciate or anything to relate to, then surely nobody's gonna watch it because is it really worth their time? And that's the point of art. I say that because the only thing I consider when consuming art is how the art speaks to me. Don't cringe at it, please hear me out, okay? I'm not I'm not trying to be cringe. Uh, it's, it's really what the art speaks to you, uh, or, or how should I say, uh, what you think about it. Do you ever get sad and you uh, turn on this music and then you cry even harder because uh, this song just make you feel so many fucking things? Or do you have any movies or TV shows that you always go back to watch on a sad rainy day? Have you ever had someone make something for you? It doesn't have to be anything fancy or big and gigantic. It could be a little card or a cake or a ring, a craft, things, anything someone makes for you to celebrate you for whatever reason. I don't have a kid yet, but I think I would treasure my kid's first drawing than a Picasso's. It's these feelings that you get from art that gives it a little bit of meaning. And really, the only meaning that it needs to exist. In the end, it doesn't really matter how much the art costs. But it's how you see it. It's what you see in it. And then yeah, you decide if it's worth the price whether you're gonna buy it or not.